let us sing a song for everything that lives. A song for all humanity. Welcome to our channel, Lightling Vision. In part one of the video about food, Mother talked about a Greek philosopher and she couldn't remember the name. It, so Hippocrates was saying, we are what we eat. Welcome, Mother. Thank you, Natalie. So today you will explain that, uh, what, what is the saying about in your own uh, words? Yes, I'll try to. Um, because mostly, as I think I already said in the last video, um, this way of saying of uh, Hippocrates is uh, interpreted as um, what's your food intake, what you choose for kind of food. Once you take it in, you eat it, it will build, end up building, building your body. And, and that's what you are. So it almost says that your food is master over you if you don't take care. There is some truth in it, but not completely. I would, and I think that Hippocrates knew that, but has not explained it in, in a more um, detailed way, or it was, he understood it uh, without explaining. Um, there's another way you can see that, and you can also say what you choose for food says something about you. That's to say the way you are, what you are, your character, your psychological makeup is reflected in the choices of food you make on a daily basis. And it's very important to, to see this in a very individual, individual, in a very individual way. That's to say what's good for you perhaps is not good for another person. And that has to do with knowing oneself. You can also say, if you eat what's good for you at that moment in your life, in moderate amounts, without exaggeration for yourself, um, then you normally you, you are in good health, unless other things come in, which is possible. But then it's not, then it's not food that is the cause of your problems. I mean. Food can become a problem for man if that individual gets out of his balance, his own equilibrium. So what you eat and the amount you eat and when you eat it depends on you and there is your harmony or your disharmony. So if somebody comes and, and tells me about, uh, food, uh, about eating disorders, the first thing I have to get to know is what is harmony for that person. And that is very individu individual, as I already said. You will see people who can, and that's, that's the, the, the very important point, you will see people that can eat all their life um, quite some amounts of, of meat and they never get sick, they are perfectly healthy and they are feeling well. Whereas somebody else who does the same thing will co get completely out of balance and get sick. So you cannot say a meat eater is, is doing unhealthy things, something unhealthy. is. You cannot say that a meat eater is uh, definitely uh, somebody who is uh, running towards sickness. And you cannot say that somebody who does not eat meat is, should be healthy. That depends. It should be in harmony with the person. The eating habits should reflect the deeper truth on a psychological plane of that person. When you are in, um, when you're in harmony with yourself, then you should not, normally you eat what suits you and in the amounts that suit you and then there's no problem. But that is um, rarely the case. That is the case for um, for people that still live in very natural surroundings, which is hardly the case anymore on Earth. Uh, the, the ancient Aboriginals could, um, mm. and in North American Indians, they could live like that. They were naturally um, in, harmony. in harmony with their natural surroundings, with themselves, with God, with nature, and they ate what they needed and no more. But that, that already got out of hand when they came in contact with, with white men, 
and they start drinking. And um, that is still more uh, the case nowadays. That's to say, a human being who eats in a completely harmonious way is difficult to find. But you will see more or less exaggeration in that domain, and that's what I'm talking about. The first thing you have to get to know is who you are and what are your natural eating habits. And that's already a big investigation for a human being. Because modern man with his intellect knows too much. A child will naturally grasp what he, he wants or needs or desires and his intellect will not come in. If he, needs, if he wants to, I cannot say need, but if he wants to eat sugar, well, he will take the jam, the jelly pot, and he will start eating it. And he will not say to himself, yeah, but that's not healthy food, so I better not take that. Whereas modern man will say to himself, oh no, no, that kind of uh, jam I will certainly not take. There are artificial colorings in it, all kinds of E numbers, no. And what does he do? He will take a big bottle with one liter of maple syrup and will generously put that in his pudding or in his coffee or God knows what. Okay. And he will, f he, will, he will say to himself, I'm eating healthy because it's maple syrup. Whereas I would say you do the same thing as the child with, uh, with the marmalade, but you imagine yourself that it's more healthy. You understand how confronting is it, it, it is? That's to say, perhaps your body will accept it and will digest it, and then there's no problem in, 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 a, in a higher sense. <clears throat> but sugar is sugar. But sugar, in, basically sugar, and even that is perhaps not a problem in the first place. The real problem is, is that person is making himself illusions about his eating behaviors. And that's wh when you're talking about harmony or disharmony, in your uh, eating habits, the first thing you should do is being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem for modern men. Because with the intellect, imagine that we're more healthy because we're eating organic food or uh, n uh, natural sugars. Whereas, perhaps, if you're honest, you have to say to yourself, yes, okay, I, e I try to eat more healthy sugars, but I still have a sugar craving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the way to harmony. It's not wrong to have a sugar craving. And if you, f if you, um, if you eat at that moment to fill up that sugar craving with natural sugars, all the better. It's better than, than white sugar, that's true. Mm -hmm. But saying that you have no problem or that nothing is wrong, that there's no sugar craving and um, eating all the time... It's like an illusion. There's something untrue in the story. And I would say that is perhaps more worse than what you're eating. But then we, we enter another chapter. <laughs> so the first thing I think we have to do is to see yeah, where, our, where are our basic tendencies. Mm -hmm. What do we do with it? Do we suppress them? Do we deny them? Are we imposing ourselves a, a diet, a very restrictive diet? Or quickly eating what we desire and then we make up as if nothing happened? What we should do, the best thing we can do, is to be honest. Where are the things I'm attracted to? Without judging, it can be good food. It can be, what would we could say, less healthy food. It doesn't matter. This honesty is very essential in, um, in eating habits. Because you will see that Changing eating habits, if that has to be done, starts with this honesty. And you will also see that the body will better digest food when you're honest. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very strange thing. If you say, oh, no, 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 I, I, uh, I just take one of or two glasses of wine and the bottle is empty, <laughs> that will make you sick. If you say, no, I, uh, I have, a, I have a, a terrible tendency to drink 
and I'm afraid that at the end of the, the evening the, the, the bottle will be empty, then you might have less problems to digest. Mm -hmm. Because it is this inner yes. honesty that will make yes. that your body will also accept that mm -hmm. for the moment. At the, in the long run, your body will show that you perhaps should change. But you have to be honest. So when I see people that are talking to me about eating disorders, bulimia or anorexia or um, uh, food cravings of all kinds, um, allergies, the first thing I have to know is what is the psychological makeup of this person and what is his life? What is he doing or not doing with himself in his life? Where are the, the key problems? Because you, what you are, is reflecting in your eating habits and finally also in, 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 in what you can digest or not. Because if you say and that will be uh, for the next video. If you say to a person, what very o which very often happens, um, a person cannot digest bread Dairy. or milk products, or what's, what's happening today, a peanuts. lot of pe peanuts or all kinds of other nuts. Seafood. Well, seafood. If that person does not take those uh, things for a moment, um, I can understand that. that uh, but... It should not be a habit for all of the life of the person. Why not? And now we are coming to, to the main point of food, because food is not what we think. It is not just minerals and vitamins and um, proteins and things like and calories that we take in and that we burn and, 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 and that build up our body. No, it has to do with um, spiritual energy in food and in myself that encounter that meet somewhere in my body and that undergo a whole process and if for instance a person has an allergy if you stay away from what you do not digest that's just an example if you stay away in an artificial way from what you what's not suiting you what you think what what think doesn't suit you or what doesn't suit you physically then in fact you weaken yourself and that's the problem you weaken yourself from a psychological point of view and on the long run from a spiritual point oh. of view and you can even find it back in your next life the problem in one way or another so you, that's where I do not agree with um, dietitians who say to a person with an allergy, do not eat it. I would say, for the moment perhaps, take care or do not eat it. But prepare yourself and then we have to look how we can do that. So that on the long run you can take that again, little by little, and, and, and you will overcome this mm -hmm. problem. So eating disorders or physical disorders that, that make that I cannot digest my food, are always linked to a psychological process in the person and something the person should work with, should overcome. Because it is linked probably to other areas of the life of the person and it can have consequences for the future of the person. Wow. So it's another vision on food. Food is far more important from a spiritual point of view and it's far more than just vitamins and minerals. minerals. That's amazing. Thank you, yeah. Mother. So you will continue with the part three and talk to us more about Yes, the about this side of food, about mm -hmm. spiritual side of food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So how you make us discover so many things that we, we don't even think about. That's amazing. Oh, I'm just here to remind you, because yes. your soul somehow knows. <laughs> the soul, but the soul, we're kind of disconnected with, with the, the busy lives and everything. But like we said, with the coronavirus, we're starting to do some introspection and we're discovering all kinds of new things, along with your Super. nice wisdom that, that, that you share with us. So thank you. So please uh, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends and family. 
and we'll see you very soon for a next video so we're leaving you on the nice song by the group mother let us sing a song for everything that lives a song for all humanity let us sing a song for everything that grows members of one family How can we forget why we're here on earth sharing all the good and bad How can we forget the one who gave us birth can't we try to understand sing a song for the world sing a song for all that's living a song for all humanity that's longing for a world in peace a song for the world sing a song for all that's living a song about a light that shines that takes away the darkness and despair and hearts a flame that never dies away many good willed men and women so sincere striving every single day working most for free do not need to be thanked Feel what it is all about A new world's being built The old one falls apart Put aside your fears and doubt Sing a song for the world Sing a song for all that's living A song for all humanity That's longing for a world in peace a song for the world sing a song for all that's living a song about a light that shines that takes away the darkness and despair So